Well, uh, it's been three years since the, the first edition uh, and it's pretty clear that uh, Victoria has embraced the uniform evidence law. Uh, there have been a number of uh, important decisions, uh, both uh, in the Victorian Court of Appeal, uh, some single judge decisions and also of course there's decisions in other jurisdictions which have relevance to Victoria. Uh, and last but not least, the High Court has handed down some important decisions uh, on uniform evidence law. So the bottom line is that even though it's been three years, there's been a, a significant developments and uh, it's time for a new edition. And, uh, and I'm hoping that a comprehensive, uh, detailed analysis of, of the relevant law in Victoria and other jurisdictions will be of assistance to practitioners and students. Well, there have been a lot of developments uh, at the High Court level. Uh, I think the, most, the, the, the developments that stand out the most would be the decisions of the High Court in respect of opinion evidence, because there's been, uh, uh, in Lithgow Council, there was a decision relating to um, uh, lay opinion evidence when that could be admitted despite the general exclusionary rule. Uh, in Das Reef, uh, the High Court looked at expert evidence uh, under Section 79 of the Act, and, and that's really been a, a major decision. Uh, hasn't resolved all the issues. There's still big question marks, indeed uncertainty about what exactly that decision stands for, because there was some divergence of opinion, as not uncommonly in the High Court. But nonetheless, it's, it's moved the law considerably. Um, at the intermediate level, there have been some important decisions both in the New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal, Court of Appeal, uh, and the Victorian Court of Appeal. And it, fascinatingly, um, the Victorian Court of Appeal has recently, in the last year, handed down decisions which have held that New South Wales courts have got it wrong uh, in respect of interpretation of very important parts of the Evidence Act. So, of course, that's generated a lot of uh, uh, talk uh, and in New South Wales only yesterday uh, the uh, New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal said that they thought they were right and the Victorians were wrong and uh, so we've now got this divergence of opinion and uh, no doubt that'll have to be resolved by the High Court one day but there have been as you can see um, a, a really quite a large number of important developments. The law's still got a long way to go in getting clarification in all the issues but uh, one function of a book like mine is to try to give an up-to-date account of where we stand at the moment. Well, I think for practitioners, it really depends whether they use the book or the service or the electronic version, depends on the type of practice they have. Um, if you're somebody who, who really is involved in evidence law questions on a day-to-day -day basis, then it means really you need to be up-to-date. So having a book that comes out every year or so probably isn't good enough. It'll give you the, 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 the basics, it'll give you the, the framework, but if you want to know what's been happening in the last weeks and months, um, you'll need something that, that is regularly updated, obviously. Uh, and so a service or an electronic uh, uh, version of, of, of the book is really what you'd be wanting. Thank you.